Welcome to Lisa H. Fuller Ministries, a word of encouragement with your host, Dr. Lisa Fuller, Senior Pastor at Christ's Arms Reaching Everywhere Ministries. Visit us at ChristsArmsReachingEverywhere.org or LisaHFullerMinistries.org. Thank you for joining me. My name is Dr. Lisa Fuller. I am your host. Welcome to Lisa H. Fuller Ministries. I'm the senior pastor of Christ's Arms Reaching Everywhere Ministries. Come and join us. Come and visit us. And please visit our website, ChristsArmsReachingEverywhere.org. It is a blessing and an honor to just come before you. Thank you for listening. Text a friend, email a friend, and tell them to tune in. Amen. Before we do anything else, let's go to the throne of grace. O oh, great and gracious Father, we come before you humbled in the mighty matchless name of Jesus. We give you glory, praise, and honor, O oh God. We ask for the presence of Holy Spirit to be in this broadcast, O oh God. In Jesus' name I pray that something that is said and heard ministers to the heart and the soul of the listeners as well as the speaker. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I want to talk to you today about God's love. God put this in my spirit. This is a time that we need to focus on love. We need to focus on what Jesus told us. If someone does something to us, we need to turn the other cheek. We need to walk in love and be reflections of the Lord Jesus Christ. He gave us two commandments. The first was to love the Lord thy God. To love God with all of your heart, all of your soul, all of your strength, all of your mind. And he said the second was to love your neighbor as yourself. And of these two commandments, these are the greatest commandments. The first is to love the Lord thy God with every single fiber within you, with every single thing that makes you up. Because without God, we can do nothing. We are no one, regardless of the material things, of the power of influence, regardless of of uh, what we have or what we think we have. It is so important to know that without God, we are nothing and we can do and nothing. But with God, with Jesus, I can do all things. I can do all things with Jesus Christ who strengtheneth me. That is the scripture and you can do all things through Jesus Christ who strengtheneth you. Amen. I want to go back to the commandments, what Jesus told us. He said to love the Lord thy God, to love the Lord thy God with all of your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. This commandments, these two commandments summarize all the commandments that the prophets, you know, that God had given the prophets, it summarizes the commandments that God had given Noah. If you love God with your heart and your soul and your mind, and if you love yourself and you love your neighbors as you love yourself, guess what? Everything else is taken care of. Hallelujah. And I'm talking about love. There is some due diligence that we need to do. And I want to just talk about that today. When it says your heart, love the Lord thy God with all of thy heart, with every fiber inside. The Bible says, as a matter of fact, the psalmist says, O Lord, create in me a clean heart. And the, the psalmist even uh, talks about in the 23rd chapter of Psalms, as you know, Lord, and I'm paraphrasing this, you know, search me, test my heart, look at my heart. From the heart, Come the issues of life. Life flows from the heart. I want to share this with you. So many years, science had said that it was the brain that regulates and dictates and determines what we do, how we do it, and when we do it. But I want to suggest to you that it is our heart, our heart, what we do, how we feel, because our heart, I want to suggest, directs our mind. 
directs our brain. You feel, you begin to feel in your heart. You love in your heart. The Bible says to guard your heart. Guard our heart with everything that we have because, again, what flows out of it is everything that we do. That's one translation. The King James Version says because what flows out of it is the issues of life. So we want to, with everything that we have, to love God with our heart, with our being, with our soul. Remember I had mentioned that the body is composed of three parts. Uh, Well, I take that back. The body, I mean human beings, because we are spiritual beings having an earthly experience. So human beings, we are composed of three parts. We're composed of a body, that's our physical being. We're composed of a spirit, and we are composed of a soul. And the soul is later, can later be divided into our emotions, our will, and our mind. When you think about that, you think about the conscience, the unconscious, the paraconscious, the paraconscious immediate emotions, the, the conscious, our awareness of what's going on around us, and the unconscious consciousness that are, um, let's just say, trouble or traumatic experiences or pain or trauma, what happens is, is that it would be uh, very painful can be destructive if we constantly replayed in our mind tragedy and trauma that happened over and over again. So what happens is our unconscious is there, kind of like a barrier to help us. So I'm still talking about our soul. So with all of our soul, our awareness, our emotions, our mind, love the Lord thy God. Love the Lord thy God. Trust in him. Lean on him. Don't lean on your own understanding. Don't lean on your own emotions, but lean on what the word of God says. God isn't worried about how you feel about things because he He wants your obedience and he wants your love. And I'm not talking about, oh, today you feel bad and tomorrow you feel good. I am talking about a constant joy that is inside of you, the joy that can only be given to you by God himself. Not talking about happiness, because happiness, the root word, comes from happenstance, meaning luck or chance. As a matter of fact, in the Greek, you can see it. You can see it in Norwegian. You can see it in the French languages. The word comes from luck or chance. We serve a God who is the same God in the past, in the present, and in the future. There is nothing that happens by happenstance or by chance or by luck about our God, the living God, the only God, the almighty God, the God who created heaven and earth. Amen. So we are serving God with everything that we have. We are loving God with everything that we have, and we are loving our neighbors. Amen. And and it says with our strength, with all of our strength, with every single thing that we have, and that is the ability to withstand, the ability to withdure, hardship, resistance, temptation, to serve God, serve him regardless, serve him with endurance, serve him, serve him and love him. I keep saying this because it is so important in the last days, and I believe that we are in the last days. The Bible tells us that man's heart will turn cold towards each other and towards God. And so it is so important that we begin to humble ourselves. Humble ourselves, pray to seek his face, to seek God's face. The Bible tells us in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verses 14, says that if we what? If we pray, first we need to humble ourselves. Humble ourselves, pray, seek his face. He said that he will hear from heaven. He'll hear from heaven and says that he'll do what? He'll forgive us. He'll forgive our land. He said, forgive the sins, heal the land. He will heal us. So that is why it's important for us to have love and to develop the love for God in our hearts and to have love for one another in our hearts. Now, 
Let me tell you, the enemy will come, and he will come to deceive you. He will come to tempt you, and he does it for the saints, and he uses people who are unbelievers and believers. The enemy cannot possess a believer in Christ Jesus because possession means ownership. As a matter of fact, some of the literature says that the words possession and depression and oppression doesn't exist. What they would rather say, the terminology that they would rather use is demonize. The enemy comes to demonize, meaning to tempt, meaning to give you feelings of depression, worthlessness, loneliness. You're not good enough. I want to let you know that you are good enough. God loves you. God knows your innermost, deepest thoughts. You say, well, I'm not ready to uh, turn it all over. You've trusted in everything else. Your life hasn't gone the way you expected. Why not trust God? Why not? You say, well, I'm not ready and I'm not prepared. And when I become ready, then I'll trust God and I'll love God. You'll never be ready without him. You need to humble yourself. And as believers, when we humble ourselves to transition from unbelievers in Christ to believers in Christ, when we humble ourselves and receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, what happens is that the grace of God, Holy Spirit, comes and lives inside of us. And we have the help of Holy Spirit to overcome and to break, to break the bondage to, of all the demonizations that the enemy tries to put upon the believers in Christ Jesus. Through the power of Holy Spirit, the same power that raised the Lord Jesus Christ from the grave, that is the same power that lives inside the believers. It's the same power that lives inside of you. So you have the power of God working inside of you. You have the power of God to overcome this world. You have the power inside of you to overcome the temptation, the depression, the oppression, the repression that the enemy comes and tries to uh, bog you down, where the enemy tries to come and to destroy your faith and to destroy you. The Bible says that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So I'm telling you here today, start with love, love in your heart. There are some people that are assigned to your life, and they say, why don't they go away? They get on your last nerves. They make the worst things come out in you. There may be a boss. There may be people in your life that you say, you know what? I'm going to have to put, I'm just telling you what I heard. I'm just telling you what people say. I'm going to put my religion to the side, and I'm going to cuss them out, or I'm going to put my religion to the side, and I'm going to beat them up. I'm here today to say no. Why don't you turn the other cheek? It is very hard. But the person who has the most strength is the person who utilizes their discipline. You have to ask God to give you the grace. We are flesh, and our flesh and our spirit are at constant war against one another. The flesh wants to do one thing, but yet the Spirit and Holy Spirit that lives inside of us. You know, if you surrender to God, the Bible says surrender to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. So when you do that and you learn to do it and do it more and more, what will happen is is that the presence of love, the power of God's gifting of love and peace, the fruit of the Spirit will grow and grow inside of you. And one day you'll say, "Mm, that used to make me angry, but it doesn't anymore. Why? Because you put God first. You put his commandments first. You begin to walk in love, the love of God, to be a reflection of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is amazing. We are God's hands here on this earth, and it is amazing. Can you imagine the Father, the God who created us, who created the heavens and the earth? We, the believers, are God's hands here on this earth. So that's the reason why we have to walk in love. The Bible tells us, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, 
And for he who believes in him, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, shall not perish, but have everlasting life. That's good news. And that means that your spirit that you want, when your body goes back to the dust where it came from, will not go and spend eternity in hell and damnation, but will go and spend eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That's good news. He loved you so much that he gave his best. He loves you so much. He knew that you were in your mess. He knew that you were fussing at people and yelling and screaming and cursing and hating. He knew that you was using drugs. He knew that you were prostituting. God knows where you are, but guess what? He still loves you. He might not like some of the things that you do, but he loves you. He loves you, and he will meet you where you are. So the question is, are you ready? Well, why don't you open your heart to God? There's never a perfect time, but the time is established by God himself. He chooses you. You don't choose him. We do not choose to be safe. He chooses us. And then we can determine whether or not we want to open our hearts. The Bible says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. That means the Lord Jesus Christ. And if anyone opens that door, says, I will come and sup with him and him with me, meaning Jesus will come within. Come on now, within him. Amen. You just need to open the door. Open the door to love. Open the door to kindness. There are people who may uh, criticize you, who may condemn you, who may not um, have or, or value you for what you have or who you are or who God made you. You know what? That per And you say, why doesn't that person go away? Why can't that person just leave me alone and be quiet? First, you need to pray for that person. And I'm not talking about standing there holding your hand up and just yelling and screaming and rebuking the devil over that person. What I'm saying is in your private prayer time, pray for that person. Pray in the name of Jesus that the enemy's deceit on that person is unveiled and that person's eyes are open to the truth. And the truth is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. And that they change, meaning repent, turn from their ways, their evil, sinful ways, and receive the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. And as a result of doing so and continue to pray, what happens is Holy Spirit will come into them, into their lives, and will change them from the inside out. Holy Spirit is still changing us as believers from the inside out. We can always walk in love more. We can always love our neighbors more. It's hard sometimes. I think this is the third time that I said that. But God will give you the grace to do so. You know, it's really interesting because I think about ways. And I thought about this as, as the Lord was giving this to me. You know, what are some of the ways that... Um, the enemy will come in and help, you know, and, and, and take our focus off of you. What are some of the ways, God, that um, the enemy will um, cover our eyes and our ear gates into where we are clouded with deception? Well, it can come from busyness. It can come from idolatry. It can come from the things that we have prayed about for years. As a matter of fact, even ministry, and what do I mean by that? You can get so busy and caught up with the work of ministry. And I mean the administrative work going here and there and everywhere and accepting um, assignments that God doesn't necessarily give you, but the enemy comes and gives you his assignment and give you assignment and give you assignment to the point where you're just going. You're a robot and you're going. You don't have time to pray. You don't pray as you usually pray. You don't study as you usually have studied. And as a result, your prayer time is decreased. Your, your study time is decreased. Prayer is important because prayer to the spirit, our spirit, 
is like physical food to our body. We need that prayer time. We need that alone time with God. If I don't have my prayer time, I am not a happy camper. I get irritable, and uh, it's just not a good thing. I'm saying that to say, but when I get up in the morning and sometimes my body is like, you know what, it's five o'clock, maybe take another 15 minutes, take another half an hour and I'll sleep for a half an hour. However, I can tell the difference as I go through the day because my prayer time is cut down from an hour to a half an hour or maybe cut down from an hour to 15 minutes. It's like, oh, I'm busy, and I was tired, and I went to sleep late the next, you know, the day before. Don't take your eyes off of God. These are ways the enemy comes in to get you off balance. And when you're off balance, when you're tired, the enemy comes in to take your focus off God, God and his commandments. What were the two most important commandments he said? He said, the love the Lord thy God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and all your strength and love your neighbor as yourself. And what happens is, is that the deception will come in, the enemy will come in, and will get you off balance through, as I said, busyness. And when you take your, your mind and your focus off God and you place your focus on something else, that's called idolatry, having a desire, a extreme desire for something other than God. It's idolatry. You can have idolatry. You can have, it could be food. It could be cars. It could be a job. It's idolatry. So with a combination of deceit and enemy uses idolatry in different forms, we can easily have our minds be taken off of God. That's why it's important to focus on God, to love him with every single thing you have in your being. That's why it's important. Look at things above and not things below. Ask God to have, say, Lord, give me the heart to hate the things that you hate and to love the things that you love. People will laugh at you. People will mock you, but that's okay because we are a peculiar people. We are a chosen generation. This is what the Lord said about us, about the believers. It's okay. Pray for them. Pray for the people who mock you. Pray for the people who talk about you. Pray for the people who say, there goes those Bible thumpers. And the reason why is, is because you are demonstrating God's love for them. They may not see it right away, but it's your prayers that will change their hearts. It's not your fussing. It's not your cussing. It's not your condemning them. It's your love. So, when you don't have time to spend, and that time has narrowed down your prayer time with God, your time, your special time with God, it takes your balance off. You can't pray for your enemies. You can't develop a love for your neighbors as you love yourself. You can't love God, and the enemy comes in with idolatry. The enemy comes in with temptation. Temptation can be, again, it can be a source of idolatry. It could be in a job, that job that you prayed for. Lord, give me a job. It could be for a project. It can be for, it could be increase that the Lord, you know, you pray, God, give me increase. Give me this project. Give me this contract. Give me this job. Give me this mate. It can be from all of the above. And what happens is, is that you find yourself working maybe 12 hours or 15 hours, five days a week, then seven days a week. You don't go to church. You don't go to worship service. You don't go to Bible study. You find yourself praying less. All of a sudden, what happens is the enemy comes in. He comes in and you start to eat out of emotion. You eat because you don't have the, the time to go and sit down and get a meal. You, you're snapping at your family. You don't spend time with your family. This is a job. This is a contract. This is resources that you prayed and asked God for. But you see how you got your mind taken off of God, how you got easily distracted? Focus on God. Give him his time. Give him his love. 
give him his honor that he desires, that he is worthy of. He's worthy of it all. He's worthy of it all. Just think about this. He loved us so much that he gave his only son. He gave his best. Would you do that for somebody who doesn't necessarily like you, for someone who talks about you, someone who criticizes you, someone who doesn't encourage you, someone who hates you or spits on you or mocks you? Would you do that? Would you give your only child to die for them and their sins so that they have the opportunity for that eternal life with Christ Jesus? Eternal life, spend eternity with God so their sins, their sins would be gone, forgiven, washed away by the perfect blood of Jesus Christ, the completed work that Jesus did by paying the ransom for both me and you on the cross. Wow, would you do that? It's hard. I don't know if I would. I'm going to be honest with you. But God did. He meets you where you are. He knows the bad thoughts, even those thoughts that you don't want anyone else to know. He knows them. Yeah. He still loves you. He still loves you. His love towards you has not changed. So give him the time, the honor that he deserves. Put him on his rightful place in the throne room of your heart. Yeah. Yeah, do that for God. Because he loves you that much. Don't neglect him. Don't allow the enemy to tempt you and deceive you. It's very easy and it can happen very easily. Humble yourself. As the Lord says, elevation is from the Lord thy God. As God elevates you, humble yourself. The more he elevates you, the more you humble yourself. The more you spend time with him, the more you focus on him, the more you give him praise, God praise, God worship. Remember, we can do nothing without him. We are the reflections of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us in 1 John chapter 4, as a matter of fact, it's uh, verse 8, verse B, says, for God is love. God is love. Wow. That's why we should walk in love. That's why we should love him. And that's why we should love our neighbor. Wow. That's good news. Other ways that the enemy comes in. The enemy comes in through our eye, our ear gates. What we watch, what we say, what we hear. Watch your gates. Watch your eye gates. Watch your ear gates. Also, who we're around in the company that we keep. This can distract us from God. This this can take our mind from God. It could be gambling. It could be drinking. It could be gossiping. It could be movies, certain movies that we watch. It could be pornography. Watch your eye and your ear gates, what you allow in. Because the enemy will come in and will attempt to deceive you and get your focus off of God. Again, look to the hills where your help comes from. Focus on things above and not below. Focus on God. Walk in his commandments and love him with everything that you have. I remember when I was in seminary, I was so excited. You know, we were in homiletics class, preaching class. We had a visiting preacher, and we were so excited, so excited. He was a very wise. He is a very wise man of God. And um, I had my notebook out, and I had my pen out. And I like to write so I can uh, learn from hearing it, writing it, and then going back. And um, he said, I don't have anything long to say. But I do have this to say to you. Everything we do, everything we see, and everything we say is ministry. And he said, that's it. I don't have anything else to say. Just think about this. Pray on this. And 
I remember saying to the person sitting beside me, who was one of my friends for many years, I said, is that it? And she looked at me and she said, I guess so. (laughs) I guess so. And the more, the closer my walk with God has become, when I look, look with a spiritual eye. Look with a spiritual eye. We are not of this world, but we are in this world. We don't want to be conformed to this world. Look in a spiritual eye. You may see people who don't look like you, who don't smell like you, who are not the same size or same color, don't have the same nose. But that does not mean that God doesn't love them. And if we want to be reflections of God here on this earth, we need to ask God to open up our hearts to love our brothers and sisters as ourselves. Lord, open up our hearts. Help us to walk in love. The Bible tells us there's faith, there's hope, and there's charity. Another translation, the Amplified Translation, says there's faith and hope and love. And all the, of these three, the greatest, the greatest of the three is love. Yeah that breaks the bondages, that breaks the barriers, that sets the captives free. At any time, Jesus could have got off the cross. But he loved you and me so much that he stayed. People didn't, they didn't respect him. They mocked him. They didn't love him. They said, crucify him. But yet he loved us so much. He stayed for you and your children, and your grandchildren. He stayed for us on the cross and paid the price for our sins. Wow, so that we wouldn't go to hell. So I'm urging you today to look inward, to do um, reflection, look inward, and examine your heart. Ask the Lord Jesus Christ, God, create in me a clean heart. Renew in me the right spirit. Don't take your spirit from me, God. A clean heart. Examine me. Test me, God. Test my heart. Examine my heart, God. Help me, God, to be reflections of you. We are humans. So, you know, we're not perfect. We're not going to be perfect. And if it isn't for God's grace, if it wasn't for God's grace, we will be devoured. I can say this 100% that you can count on the fact that we'll miss the mark, but God's grace is sufficient. So when people do you wrong, when people do the things that you don't think they um, should do or say to you, or when they don't, when they do things that they shouldn't, ask God to give you the love. Ask God to give you the love. His love. Ask God to give you his love. Help me, God. Give me your love and help me to see people the way you see people. Help me to see others the way you see others. Amen. If God is pulling at the heart, at the strings of your heart, and you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, This is an opportunity for you to do so. Say, I'm not good enough. I'm not ready. You'll never be ready. You'll never be good enough. This is an opportunity. You can receive Jesus sitting on a bar stool. You can receive him in the middle of a cornfield. You can receive Jesus sitting at your house. I want you to say this after me and repeat this if you want to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. I want to share with you first that the enemy comes in to deceive you, to make you think that you have to work your way to heaven. You have to work your way into heaven. You, you don't. It says you have to be a good person. There are good people who are going to hell. Saving grace is how you get to heaven, meaning trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, receiving him, confessing this with your mouth. You will be saved. 
Lord Jesus, repeat after me if this is you. Or if you want to renew your commitment to God, I am a sinner. I cannot save myself. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died on the cross. And I believe that God the Father raised you on the third day by the power of Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus, I believe that you're seated at the right hand of God this day. I repent of my sins and turn from my wicked ways. Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. If this is you and you have just done that, I pray in the name of Jesus that Holy Spirit gives you the assurance of what you've just done this day by receiving the Lord Jesus Christ into your life and making him your personal Savior. I pray in the name of Jesus that um, you grow in God and seek his face and love him with every being, every fiber in your heart, in your soul, and in your spirit. Let me pray for everyone who is under the sound of my voice. I asked you in the name of Jesus to touch the listeners of this broadcast in the name of Jesus and cover them with the precious blood of Jesus. I ask you to not only cover them, but their families as well. No weapon formed against them shall prosper in the name of Jesus. And every tongue that raises up against them shall be defeated because they are the inheritance of the Lord Jesus Christ. No weapon. He who dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I pray in the name of Jesus that you cover them with their, your wings, O God. I pray in the name of Jesus that you deploy angels around them to keep them and protect them in the name of Jesus and their families. You said a thousand may fall by their left hand and tis thousand by their right, but nothing shall come to thee. So in the name of Jesus, keep them, protect them, guide them, and direct their path. Open up their hearts, O God, in the name of Jesus, that they walk in love and receive your grace and your peace in the name of Jesus. Lord God, I ask you to give them clean hearts in the name of Jesus and renew their spirits, renew their souls in the name of Jesus. Cancel out the deception of the enemy in the name of Jesus. Cancel out in the name of Jesus anything in their lives that is not like you in the name of Jesus. I bind every trick of the enemy and counsel it over their lives and their families in the name of Jesus. And I plead the blood of Jesus over them. I ask you, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, to give them a, a strength that like they had never before. Let them mount up with wings of eagles. Lord, let them run and not be weary, and let them walk and not faint. Let them trust in you, O oh God and you alone. Help them, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, to be reflections of you here on this earth. Father, I thank you for them. I ask for peace, wholeness, restoration, and prosperity to come in their lives in the name of Jesus. Use them, O oh God, for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God and amen. Remember to trust the Lord thy God and to lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Love the Lord thy God with all of your heart, all of your soul, all of your, your uh, mind, and all of your strength. And love thy neighbor as thyself, because these two are the greatest commandments. And above the three, hope, faith, and love. Love is the greatest. God so loved you so much that he gave his best, his only begotten son. For he who believes in the Lord Jesus Christ shall not perish, but will receive everlasting life. 
God bless you. My name is Dr. Lisa Fuller. I am the senior pastor of Christ's Arms Rich and Everywhere Ministries. If you have prayer requests, call us at 313-398-3131. Again, 313-398-3131. Come and visit our website at ChristArmsReachingEverywhere.org. ChristArmsReachingEverywhere.org. Visit our YouTube page as well, Christ's Arms Reaching Everywhere Ministries. God bless you. I love you. And may the Lord Jesus' face shine upon you and just bless you and be gracious to you. And may he lift up his countenance and give you peace henceforth and forevermore. Amen. Say it with me. Amen and amen. I love you. But always, always, always remember that God loves you more. God bless you. You have been listening to Lisa H. Fuller Ministries with your host, Dr. Lisa Fuller, Senior Pastor at Christ's Arms Reaching Everywhere Ministries. For more information on Christ's Arms Reaching Everywhere worship services and Bible studies, go to ChristsArmsReachingEverywhere.org or LisaHFullerMinistries.org. For prayer requests, please call 313-398-3131.